What we want to talk about for one brief second is just what's coming next and what we're seeing out there as this application is coming due rapidly. I'm sure you're feeling the heat of it. So are we. We want to be able to help as many people as we can get. So I want to just go over something very, very quickly and clearly. In the ownership continuum, in the dispensary license application, we have, we're seeing like these five types of ways that you can have ownership on an application. And ownership defined by the state is 1% or more of equity. So even if you have 1%, that is, you're deemed an owner, and that would count as one of your 10 applications that you can be an owner on. So there's 10 max. And here, in those 10 max where you would have ownership, there are four different scenarios. Number one is if you are like, I am an entrepreneur. I have a vision. I know what I want to do. I've been here all day taking copious notes. I have experience. I can do this, and I am going to do it, mostly by myself. It's your full vision, and it's mainly on you to do each of these parts and to apply for the license. You may not need then your 49% investor right away. You don't need their help in this area before you, get, before you do the license. You're going to put the license application in yourself. If you get a conditional license and then thereby get a license, you're in the driver's seat. You have hand at that point. You've got the license. You don't need to probably give away 49% of your dispensary. You got the license. You did it. It was all your work. It's your vision. You get to run it the way you want it. Maybe at that point you need your $2 million to open and to build and find your real estate and do everything according to plan, but you don't have to give away 49% for that $2 million probably at that point. I'm just throwing out the numbers, but that's something to think about. Okay, now there's a dotted line here because these three scenarios are still part of this 10 that you can be on, 10 applications, and they are in that 49%. You're the 51. You are the 51. You still want your vision. You still want to be a hands-on entrepreneur and a hands-on owner. You need to find the, uh, you, you, but you need help in doing this application. And you want, you want that investor with you through this process because they have experience and you want their help here. So you are going to find a 49% owner. They are going to have their own ideas. They might, may not give you your vision fully the way you want it. So you're negotiating your vision a little bit right there. You're like, oh, I can't have pit couches and a hookah lounge in my dispensary. And then that 49% that investor is going, yeah, that's not really going to work. So you're negotiating the vision. OK, so that is uh, one of those. Now. There is another right here, and we're seeing a lot of investors that want this number three. They're like, okay, I'm going to be the 49%. I want the 51% social equity applicant. I, I'm, I'm good with that. I, I, I'm okay with that. But it is my vision. I, I know how to run a dispensary. I know the business. I know how to contract with vendors and, and inventory and do operations, all that stuff. And they want to run the show. There are plenty of social equity applicants that we have spoken to that are OK with that, too. They still want to learn. They still want to be there. They know they may not have the, the skills at this moment. And they're OK to adapt, um, to adopt the vision of the 49% investor. So that's another scenario. The fourth, number four, we saw new. We're, we're talking to investors as we're talking to you because we want to make the right matches. And just yesterday, we heard of a new one where that 49% investor said, yes, we want 51. We want, we want to get the 50 points. And we certainly want social equity as the 51% in our application. But we don't want it to be one person. We're going to put together a group of social equity applicants. Maybe let's just call it five right now to make it an even number. We're going to put five, and they're all going to split the 51%. So then, thereby, if you're one of those, you're only getting 10% at that point. You're sharing it with these other uh, four social equity applicants, so there's five of you. Why? Why would the 49% investor want to do that? Help our social equity people. Help the social equity people, but also because they're scared. They don't want to get in bed with one person who's going to own 
what they've just put $2 million down for. They don't know you. You don't know them. I mean, you can't, you cannot begrudge that thought process for them. I mean, they don't. So they're thinking, okay, but I need my voting rights at the end of the day. I want to sort of be able to make the decisions because I own six dispensaries already. I know how to, like, I gave this scenario. I, uh, you're, you're one of the five, okay? And it comes down to you're all having a meeting and you're deciding who's going to be your transportation provider. And one of the social equity of the five says, my uncle, he's opening, he's starting a transportation. We're going to go with my uncle. And the 49 percent goes, oh, no, I have transportation that I've already, I've gotten the lowest price. They've been nothing, 100 percent guaranteed. I, I like this vendor. I don't know your uncle yet. We, you know, can't go with it yet. He's 20 percent more. Your uncle, it doesn't make financial sense. And then, you know, what if he, he, he feels now that he has more voting because he's got 49% and there's five, they don't only each have 10%. It's not, I don't, I don't view that. I don't, I mean, we'd have to know who the person is. You might say, well, that's, you know, is that predatory? They're just mitigating risk over here. They want to run it. They know, they know what they know. They want to teach, they want to mentor, but they want some voting control. That's so, also how real companies work, by the way. Okay, there's usually real companies. But there's not one person making a decision. Right. Okay. We 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 kind of take a vote, or we have a SOP as to how are we going to make a big decision. Fifty one person doesn't get to make it. Right. So that they're just working the way that businesses typically work. Just that's just kind of the way the real world is. So there's I a just question. Want to reiterate that particular scenario, sure. the veteran's extra points would not come into play because the veteran would have to have a 51% That's a good position point. in order to get that. That is a good point. And I, that may be a weird, but I think that you're right, that the veteran true. has to be it's the 51. So that, they would not get the five points for the veteran. That's a great point. Thank you. Okay. So now we got the squiggly yeah, well, line. You could have five people who are all veterans. Thank you, Larry. You could have five people. Great. So we have a lawyer in the room. We oh, like Larry. Larry. Larry's got the good thought process going. Oh, I love it. Go, Larry. Go, Larry. Go, Larry. Go, Larry. Go, Larry. I love it. Okay. Last but not least. Absolutely not least. Okay, remember in this scenario, because you're going to have 1% or more of ownership, you can only be on 10 applications. And over here, you see this is no limit, it's unlimited. So this is, I hesitate to use the word loophole, but some people are looking at it that way. In this scenario, number five over here, a non-social equity applicant can still get their 50 points and be 51% or more ownership in that dispensary license. All they have to do is ensure that the majority of their employees particularly six employees out of every 10 are social equity about this. employees. Sorry, I wasn't okay. in the room. Okay, <laughs> good. I don't have to do that one. I mean, I don't have to go too far into it. So anyway, that is, you know, and did you talk about them from day one, January 2nd, they're on the payroll, they're earning them. So I mean, it's not okay, a bad thing. It could be December 2nd. I don't know if it's the person, but is it legal to do like side deals? So, okay, this is another good question. Is it legal to do side deals? So we're hearing about scenarios where an investor says, you're my one person, you're my 51%, we're putting in the application, and then on, you know, uh, two weeks later, I'm going to buy you out. And I will pay the state what I need to pay the state to not be a social equity license anymore. I'll pay the difference, and which is nominal, and I buy you out, and da-da-da. Can you do it? Sure, you can do it. Guess what else you can do? When that license is in and everything is running and they're like, great, I want to pay you, you can change your mind. Because... It's really not how the law was meant to be. It wasn't meant to flip it, get it out, no more social equity. So it's not, I mean, you can do it. You're not doing social equity any, any fair shake there. Um, and they're really, they don't have a leg to stand on because they didn't write it in their application that they were going to do that a week after they got it and they were going to buy you out and it's not going to be social equity. They didn't put that in there. So if you say, if they, somebody says that to you, you should say, okay, let's write it in the application. They're not going to write it in the application. They, they probably won't write. get granted the application, so the, the license. And um, so mm, it's a sticky and a, sli so it's a slippery there, fish. But law is there, but it's not enforced at all. And there's no enforcement. Of what? Preventing this thing is happening. Mm, well, I don't know. Larry, what do you say? No, nothing to prevent it. Except well, your soul. Yes. Oh.
Which is yourself. I thought there was a time. Oh, I have a question. The question is, does the 49% investor have to be an Illinois resident? Not at all. Not at all. Question. Well, that's what the side deal is. You, listen, if you're making that side deal, you better hope that you have that in writing. Because somebody that's trying to make that side deal with you is he or she himself or herself a slippery fish. And they'd be like, well, I said it, but I don't. but then you don't have to leave your, your post if that were the case. You know, you'd be like, well, I'm not giving up the 51%. So anyway, yes. So it is not validated. If it's not on the application. If it's like separately done. It's not validated from a standpoint that you don't have to honor it because there's nothing they can do if they tried to sue you or what. It would not. Not they, that I would have to that. No, I'm just saying. We're in a That's why we're asking. Okay. Like, okay. Can they do side? Yeah, I mean, you can do the side deal. You can do the side deal. But it doesn't hold. If, if you decided to change your mind, it wouldn't hold. If you change your mind, it wouldn't hold. Right. Okay. You also have to remember that your, your reputation is everything you have, too. No, no, but it holds it down. Right. No. No, 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 you can't process He can't force you. It's really shady. I'm just saying, just remember. Okay, next thing. Guys, where we're going to go with this, where we're going to go with this, is that Momentum Lab is racing to provide you these things and racing to provide the matches and the clinics to help you write your license. Okay, the clinics to help you with your license. You saw that we brought before you different specialists for the different um, exhibits in the license. So the, the, the help that we feel we can provide is if you have specific questions it is your job to fill out the license we will not be filling out license applications we can answer specific questions about specific exhibits because we will go back to our exhibit you know our specialist in that exhibit if it was labor we could ask you know Cheryl Cheryl and so we can answer specific questions as they come to us as you write and I mean when you think it's at its finished form a written exhibit, a portion, a part of the license application. We can have it reviewed by an expert. We go, I mean, we can't go through all these applications, but we have certain. Read everyone's. So, so our employment, you know, show she can read hopefully a hundred of just that section. That we feel like we can do. We cannot. We will not overpromise and underdeliver. We can't. You don't deserve it, and we don't deserve it, and we know not. What we're, in, what we're into it for and what the time frame is. So that's what, when we say clinics, we mean targeted questions from you to us that say in this exhibit, here's my question, we will try to get those answered. And specific exhibit reviews. That is what we can offer. So going forward in these clinics, the people who will be in the clinics, the people who will actually be actively working on the application at that time, not not just backing out for next year. Really. It has to be now. We can't. I mean, we just don't have the bandwidth to do it for the next. The, a lot of people in here are for the next. They got the learning. That's great. But for the brass tack and block and tackle clinic health, it's got to be for what's coming. We will be done. We are we at December 14th? What was our date? I mean, we okay, have to. So our work, like. We're going on vacation December 14th. So yeah. if you give us some information on December 13th, I mean, I got it. We're going. We're going away. Like for how expensive do you want? Like you'll need, five, 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 if you're going to be needing these services, you'll need to get in touch with us and let us know when we can. And we're going to have to have that. And, and we don't want to have to disappoint anybody. We really want to help and get it to the right expert. You saw a lot of experts here. We have other experts, additional And experts. our experts are not around over Christmas. Right. I mean, so, we have right. to be done. It has to yeah. be done. It has to be done so any of the experts that were here, do they have templates or things that they can give to you that will kind of help guide us as we're doing this? So we don't just write up 2,500 words and send it to Robert just like this. So, you know, don't forget, and you may not have even heard this throughout the day, Gromentum Lab wishes to be a business accelerator in cannabis supporting social equity entrepreneurs. We have a 16-week intensive 
um, curriculum to help you start your businesses within cannabis, not just dispensaries, but yes, dispensaries and ancillary, transportation, infused, craft grow, those types of things. So that is what we are hoping to be able to do. We also, if we're gonna match and help you find investors or whatever, we want to ensure those investors that we're gonna be helping you educate, that you're gonna come through the Growmentum Lab Accelerator. That's a value to them, and it's a value to you. We will also help you listen to what the investor is saying and have your back in that negotiating process and, 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 and mediate and listen to what they're saying too. So we want to be in that process of this application and plan. And that'll be part of how you come through the accelerator. Okay. Well, yes. Is it is it makes sense to be on an exhibit that Gromentum Lab doesn't yeah. make sense to be on the exhibit? Yeah. If, if Gromentum Lab's on your exhibit, then you get points for incubating or for being part of incubating. Right. Like I'm currently taking. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay.